Lower your expectations before going into a PhD. Quite often, even by universities and institutions, we're told that doing a PhD is the top of the top. You have to be an absolute genius. You have to sort of produce all of this amazing new data that no one else in the world has ever seen. You need to become the world's leading expert in a particular field when in fact you don't. Take away my PhD right now if that's the case. So lowering your expectations and understanding that a PhD is about producing results, reporting on those results, analyzing those results, and going back and doing that over and over again until you have enough information to fill a thesis. It's about building up new knowledge and you do that by doing little things every single day. So I actually wanna do a video on all of the things a PhD is not because too often we go in with this kind of stereotype typical idea of how amazing we should be to be able to do a PhD and actually graduate. So yeah, lower your expectations, people. Miserable PhDs have a miserable PhD. So if you are entering a PhD and you're not at least excited by the prospect of understanding and learning about a particular field, if you are not excited or you are um, you know, struggling with your own mental health issues before going into a PhD, your PhD is only gonna make those things worse. Because once you are miserable in the academic system, miserable seems to be attracted to you. Miserable people, miserable results, miserable life, miserable supervisors. It is about perception a lot of the time. And so if you are struggling in any way with um, anxiety, depression, or um, just feeling a little bit sad sometimes, that's absolutely something you need to take a look at because a PhD will not help that in any way. So make sure you've got good support, make sure that you've got um, some opportunity to go see a professional if you need to, and make sure that you really sort of focus on that mental health aspect because it really does matter throughout your PhD. Your PhD can only be as good as you can operate. There are many times when you have to play the game and not fight the game. And I know this because I decided I would fight the game and that is where my career slowly sort of like spiraled into darkness and out of control. Control. Don't get me wrong, there are times when you just want to like butt your head up against the wall because the academic system makes no sense. But don't try to correct it. Just go with the flow. If your supervisor needs you to do this certain thing that you think is stupid, a lot of the time for a happy PhD, doing that thing will just help. If the university has got certain expectations on you that you think is rubbish, a lot of the time you just have to jump through those hoops. And uh, yeah, sometimes, and I, I'm not this sort of you know personality type, I wanted to fight. I've got this kind of like oppositional defiance thing going on. But a lot of the time when I just sort of like gave in, and uh, just played the system rather than trying to force it into my ideal system, I was way happier. Sometimes working well with your supervisor means flattering them and boosting their ego. Now, I used this little superpower um, rarely, but effectively. And sometimes you do just have to work out what your supervisor wants to hear and just sort of like, parrot it back to them. You know, if they wanna be told, wow, that's a really clever idea, or I hadn't thought of that. Like sometimes that relationship, you do have to kind of lean in to their ego a little bit. And I did it just if I needed, um, you know, to, to just make sure that relationship was strong. And it's, I guess, a little bit manipulation, but sometimes just sat there being like, wow, you're so amazing, you're awesome. Like, wow, I never thought of that. That's an excellent idea. Like all of those things, they need to hear to feel valued. And then of course, those interactions in your relationship grows. I wouldn't say that it's an unethical way to build that relationship, but it's really effective. So sometimes your supervisor just needs to be sort of thanked too, because a lot of the time academia does not thank these people. The higher up you go, the more the university wants from you and the less it actually says thank you. You get like this rubbish sort of like seminar, you know, with a cup of tea and some cheap cake from the supermarket and they go, well done, there's your reward. Right, now go get me some more delicious results and money. So these people, supervisors, need your thanks and uh, it can really help your relationship if you just lean into that a little bit every so often and just sort of like play on that ego. People are lying to you. Their results 
are maybe not going the way they want. Their lab work, their research, all of that, that's not going the way they want quite often. Academia is all about failure, but of course a lot of people want to put on a brave face. And so they say, yeah, it's going really well. It's great. My research is progressing in this way. And they tell you the highlight reel. But in fact, they're having the same doubts, the same sort of uh, internal monologue that you are but they're just not saying it out loud. The thing is you've got 100% insider access to the thoughts in your own mind, not their mind. And so you often think, well, why don't I feel this so amazingly about my research? Or why is it not my sort of like uh, mindset to be, oh, this is awesome. They're just feeling exactly the same way. So quite often in academia, we do sort of uh, feel like we're being left behind or we're not as good because people are just outright lying. So you just need to remember that for a happy PhD because they've got their doubts and insecurities as well. They're just not saying them out loud and we should say them out loud more often. Being lazy right now will hurt you in the future. I've said it a million times on this channel, but it's always worth repeating that it is a marathon and not a sprint. And therefore, any little thing you can do today to help you in the future will compound and it will get better and better over time. It doesn't feel like you're sort of skipping out on much at the moment. It doesn't feel like you're kind of, you know, giving yourself a massive pain in the ass later. It just feels like, oh, I just won't analyze that graph now. Oh, I just won't do that thing now. I'll leave that till tomorrow. And that can happen over and over again until you end up with this snowball of unfinished tasks. So little things every single day happen. So don't put it off. Do that little thing right now because if you put it off today, it's going to come bite you in the ass later on. Being happy throughout your PhD is 10% what happens and 90% of how you react to it. It's no secret that I like stoicism. I really sort of took to that philosophy about two years ago and it really sort of holds truth for your PhD. That is, things happen. Things happen in your PhD that you have no control over. So how you react to those things that go poorly really determines how happy you are through your PhD. If it's outside of your control, shake it off. Say, this isn't something I've got control of. What do I have control of? And focus on those things. That's a real key to being happy throughout your PhD because things will go wrong. Things are a lot of the time outside of your control, but moving forward with the things you can control is the only way you can kind of feel ownership and really feel like you're in control of your own destiny. Not everyone will like you. Throughout your PhD, people will always be critical about your research. And unfortunately, that is just a reality of life. And it can hurt particularly if someone that you respect, like your supervisor or someone that's senior to you, says to you, you know, certain hurtful things or is extremely critical or gives you the impression they don't like you. But moving forward, making sure that you're at least happy with what you're doing and the direction you're going is the only kind of real compass you can follow. So make sure that you're comfortable with your decisions, your research, and accept that some people will just not understand why you're doing certain things in a certain way and they may not like it. So not everyone's going to like you or your research. And that's just a reality of academia. We have to be critical. That's kind of like how we're trained to interact. But sometimes it comes off as a personal attack and it's hard to sort of like shrug off. So yeah, not everyone will like you. Oh well. Don't make decisions when you're tired, hungry, upset, emotional, or anything like that. Making decisions throughout your PhD should be based on research and facts. And we like to trick ourselves into thinking we're not human sometimes for these decisions, but we are. And quite often we make decisions throughout our PhD based on things that we can actually control and that aren't going to help the decision making process. For me in particular, that's when I feel sad or demotivated. Um, it's when I'm hungry. It's when I'm lacking sleep. I'm sleep deprived. All of those things really impact my decision making skills. A PhD and research is all about you making lots of little decisions every single day to do this, to do that, to go that direction, to try this. And sometimes you have to delay those decisions until you are um, feeling better. The bigger the decision, 
the more you should have slept. You should have a nice big sort of full belly or at least, you know, not be super hungry. You need to feel well. You need to have a positive interaction with someone recently to make those big important decisions. We are not robots and therefore we need to make sure we are in the best decision making capacity before making the important decisions. Comparison is a big thing and I want to say that comparison when you're feeling like you're, you know, lacking in your PhD or research, you always compare up. You look up to the people who have got more papers, who are further along in their research, have got more successful research than you, and that is where you kind of pin your success. But you need to remember to compare yourself to everyone who is around you. You don't appreciate what you've actually been able to achieve throughout your PhD and research. Now, I'm not saying that it's about saying, ha ha, I've got more research than you, or ha ha, I've got more papers than you, but it is just a nice way to reset your brain into thinking, well, where am I in the grand scheme of things? Of course, I'd love to be up here in this sort of like elite, my, you know, where I've put the elite people in my mind, but quite often, we are just somewhere in the middle in the bell curve and that's absolutely okay. So there we have it. There are all of the harsh truths to a happy PhD. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that. Do you agree? Disagree with me? Your comments make all of my videos better. So please remember to comment. Also, there are two more ways that you can interact with me. I've got my newsletter where you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I use to the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more. And also I've got academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my two eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. There's the Insider Forum, a blog there as well. Mwah! I'm working hard on it to help you make your PhD in academia work for you, and I'll see you in the next video.